Again, welcome to everyone. And I know some people are coming in and Ms. Rogers is admitting people as they uh, join us. So we'll get started from there. I'm gonna uh, share my screen with all of you. I have a presentation that we'll go through and I'll give you the ground rules uh, to start. So I'm gonna pull up my screen here to share with everyone. All right, and Mr. Corzelius, you can see my screen, correct? Yes, we can. Okay, very good. All right, so some of the slides that you'll see today, if you were in on any of the district meetings, will be a repeat for you. Um, but I, looking at the audience, I know some of you were in the district meetings, some of you were not. And so I'm going to quickly go over the district slides um, that were there because they will be applicable to Batavia High School. And then uh, we've been collecting some frequently asked questions for the high school itself. So that will be on the back end of what I'm presenting. So just wanted to go through some ground rules. Um, please keep your microphone muted uh, when you're not talking. Um, and we're going to utilize the chat box. And so Mr. Corzelius and Ms. Rogers are the assistant principals at the high school. And they uh, they are going to be monitoring that. So uh, I'm just going to end the show right there. Mr. Corzita said I was too big, so I'm going to try again. Mr. Corzelius, is that better? No. It's, it's zoomed in again. Okay. All right. Well... I'm going to end the show and I'm going to close that. All right. And I apologize for that. We practiced this earlier and it didn't behave that way. All right, Mr. Corzi, this is a showing now. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. All right. All right, it should be showing now on your screen. Ms. Rogers, does it look like the right size? No, we can just see the BHS virtual town halls. We can't see the right hand column that you have. Okay. It cuts off the top. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go uh, with the slides as they are. Um, and then um, Ms. Rogers, if you wanna uh, see if you can pop in my office and, and grab it, that would be great. But I'm just going to go over the ground rules again. I'm going to uh, review the slides with you. Um, we're going to try to stay on topic, respect differences as we see them. Um, this meeting is an opportunity to um, understand uh, the reopening plan for the district, but also the reopening plan uh, for Batavia High School. Um, this meeting is not a, a time for a debate on um, the direction that we've been given from New York State um, for, you know, um, each of our opinions on this, um, but it is just to inform and to allow people to ask questions about our plan. And uh, for everyone to understand that we really we have two main things that we thought about as, as the district put the plan together, first and for foremost being the, the health and safety of our students and staff. Uh, and then secondarily, part of the um, health and safety of our students is uh, trying to find a way that we could have as much in-person contact uh, with students as possible. 
um, as that is what uh, our community was asking for. And of course, you know, um, we'd all like to be in a, a non-COVID world, um, you know, but uh, we're going to uh, make the plan work the best that we can for our students. This slide I know is cut off, but uh, it just gives the timeline of um, the, the plan that the district used. And uh, most of you know that uh, it wasn't until August 7th uh, when the governor made a decision that schools uh, could implement their plans to reopen. And so uh, you'll see that there. And um, this chart here, which may be cut off on your screen, um, and I'm gonna keep talking while Ms. Rogers sees if she can get the screen to a better size for you. Um, uh, just shows that the, the COVID numbers in Genesee County uh, are frankly about as low as they are anywhere. Um, so, um, and so that's a good sign. Um, we don't know if there's going to be a spike uh, coming, but uh, we are encouraged by the numbers in Genesee County and hope that um, we, uh, we won't have a spike moving after that. This screen just shows an updated calendar um, that was updated and approved by the board last week. Um, this is having the students start on September 14th. So that September 14th will be the first day for all of our students. And uh, that will allow us to use the previous week uh, to focus our professional development on three things. Um, primarily, the, like the health and safety of our students and staff. Um, we're also going to be spending time uh, with our staff on the social emotional needs, uh, both of our students and frankly of our adults um, after having a long layoff, and then uh, best practices in terms of teaching in the virtual world. Um, many of you may have been involved in some of the district committees on reopening. All right, I'm under, understanding you can see the screen at the right size now, so appreciate your patience with that. Um, and thank you to those that uh, participated. And the three models that were discussed were in-person instruction, remote virtual instruction, and hybrid instruction. And so um, we uh, landed uh, on our opening plan that um, it would be a hybrid model that we will be opening on as a district. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later in the presentation. And then uh, for families that have chosen a remote virtual instruction only model, um, we have that. And we'll talk about why we don't have a fully in-person instruction model uh, coming up. All right, this chart I wanna spend a little bit of time on. Um, there's five cohorts that students can be in, all right? And this, um, in cohort one, uh, is our students with the last name of A through K. Um, those students will attend school in person on Monday and Wednesday um, and be involved in remote learning on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then cohort two uh, would be our hybrid students with the last name L through Z. They would attend school Tuesday and Thursday in person and then be remote learning on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Cohort three is the one I wanted to explain a little bit. Um, this is for those of you that have students that um, are in our career technical education courses over at BOCES. So that might include Justice, Justice Academy, Health Academy, Welding, um, some of our programs over there. On Mondays and Tuesdays, anyone involved in our CTE program will be at BOCES all day um, for their program. Um, so they won't, they will be in person both of those days. They won't be at the high school at all, um, but they'll be following their BOCES programming that day. Um, so all of their high school courses will be scheduled for Wednesday and Thursday. And so for most of our students, that will mean their uh, English language arts, their social studies and their PE that would be plugged in on your Wednesday, Thursday schedule. One of those days would be in person at the high school, and one of the days would be um, learning virtually at home. And uh, 
depending on what letter you are, A through K, depends on which day you're in person. Um, and so on Wednesdays, A through K, uh, BOCES students would be in person. And on Thursday, L through Z, BOCES students would be in person uh, and vice versa. Um, so that's a little bit of a, a, of a change on this chart that was published by the district uh, that we needed to clarify and make sure that we had the right number of students in school. Uh, cohort four is uh, for our students um, that uh, might have some special circumstances where they need to be in school every day. Um, and so um, some of our students with the most significant special needs uh, would be in this cohort. Some of our English language learners uh, will be uh, attending four out of five days a week. Um, and then as we get started, there may be some students that aren't engaging or maybe they're showing that they do need an extra level of support in person. And we learn that we end up having room to fit them in. Um, and so we'll be looking at those students on a case by case basis. All right, and then our bottom one is our virtual cohort. And those are ones that parents have chosen um, to not be in person uh, at school at all, uh, at least to start. And so that would be um, completely online programming um, right now at the high school, we have about 13% of our families that have chosen uh, the all virtual cohort. And so what that means is we uh, have developed one class in each of the core subject areas uh, for those, um, 9 through 12. And then we are offering a, a limited number of electives there um, in our virtual cohort. Um, and so that's uh, kind of the arrangement there. I'll get a little bit more into detail um, on some of our offerings later on in the presentation. Right here on the screen, you can see a, a cover page of our reopen uh, Batavia Strong plan. And maybe some of you have read it cover to cover. Uh, maybe some of you haven't, but there's uh, a lot more detail in that plan than even we'll go over today in our presentation. And so feel free to uh, find that. Uh, it's right on our district webpage. And uh, things that are specific to Batavia High School start at page 63. All right, so we've had a lot of questions from parents, students, uh, the community about what will health and safety look like? How are we going to make sure um, that as we start to have students and staff back in the building, um, that we put all the precautions in place that we need to um, have to make sure that we can um, ensure uh, that we're as safe of a place as possible. And so there will be daily temperature checks required for all staff, students, and anyone who is to enter the building. Um, and so we have, uh, digital thermometers that uh, our students will all walk past as they go through. It takes about five seconds and um, if it flashes to green, they're allowed to go on in. Um, if the fever is, if they have a fever, um, at that point uh, they won't be allowed in the building. Um, we'll make contact with parents and uh, we'll hold them um, in a separate spot uh, until we uh, have a chance uh, for the student to be picked up, but um, no one with a fever will be allowed in the building, including staff. Staff, as they come in in the morning, uh, need to fill out a health attestation before they get here, um, and then they need to do the same temperature check. Um, and so um, you can see at the top some of the uh, things to be watching for, um, and so uh, those will be the things in the health attestation that uh, staff will be uh, filling out and will be provided to uh, parents as well. Um, the processes in our building, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to Batavia High School, is maintaining six feet, feet of space between individuals in all directions at all times um, and or use of physical bar barriers. And so um, really uh, teaching our students that we want six feet of space um, when they're having conversations, when they're in all environments and working hard, um, you know, to do that. Um, masks are uh, required 
and we'll get into that a little bit more as we go. Uh, for those of you that have students that will ride a bus, I'm not going to go over this in detail, but um, essentially there will be one student to a seat on the bus, uh, unless there's a, a sibling uh, that's riding uh, with them. So in that case, if it's a sibling or somebody that lives in the same household, there could be two to a seat that way. Um, and so that's created some challenges in terms of uh, uh, our buses. Um, and so in many cases, we have two runs that uh, we would be sharing buses with one of the elementary schools. And as you'll see later, that uh, was one of the driving reasons why um, some of the times needed to be adjusted on there. But students that are riding the bus will need to wear a mask at all time. Um, and then um, there will be a cleaning of buses in between bus runs on buses that are shared between buildings. Uh, we've developed detailed cleaning uh, protocols in the buildings. Um, and so one of the things that's going to happen uh, at the end of each day um, is after the teacher's teaching day, um, they're only going to be able to remain in the building for a limited amount of time. And that's going to allow our custodial staff to have all the staff out in the building um, to do their cleaning each night uh, so that we're ready for school the next day. We are continuing with our food services, but it will look a little bit different. Um, and so as many of you experience at restaurants, um, the idea of um, a buffet style or uh, any kind of salad bar or something, um, you know, isn't going to work this year. And so um, like our, our salads will be pre-packaged instead of students going through a, a salad bar. Um, you know, and making sure that there's not uh, opportunity for multiple touches of food, um, you know, so that um, the food is prepared by our workers and given directly to the students. Um, and then uh, there still will be food available for students that are on their virtual days. And you'll get more information about that, um, but uh, that food can be picked up at any of the uh, school locations on the virtual days. All of our students have a, a Chromebook, and the Chromebook is, I'm going to call our main textbook this year. Um, Chromebooks are going to run our Google Classroom, and so that will be a, a key feature of, of all classes that students are in. And so students need to have their Chromebook at home every day. They will bring it back and forth. Um, they also need to, <clears throat> excuse me, have their Chromebook in class for all their classes. Um, so. The Chromebook is going to be a really important tool. Um, most of you still have your Chromebook at home. Um, we know that our incoming ninth graders do not have them as they turn them in. And so uh, they will be receiving their Chromebook on uh, Link Day, um, which is our orientation for ninth graders that's happening on September 10th. If there's a family that uh, doesn't have access to home internet, uh, we do have a, a limited number of uh, mobile Verizon hotspots, and we just ask that uh, parents contact the school to let us know if there's a need, and we will make sure that your family gets access to one of those. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, social-emotional learning um, will be a, a key part of our opening, but also uh, part of our, our programming right through the fall. Um, we know that uh, different families have been affected different ways during uh, this COVID time. And um, we need to uh, make sure that we have those supports in place, not only for our students that are in person in school, uh, but for our students that are online at home. And so um, our teachers are working hard on making sure that those practices are part of their classroom experience. And our counselors are working hard on making sure that we're doing uh, check-ins with families and making sure that all of our students' physical needs as well as any mental health needs um, are addressed as we reopen. All right, I'm going to skip the scheduling slide because we'll get a little bit more into detail on that later. Um, we've had some questions about attendance and 
Um, a daily attendance and participation is required. Um, it's going to be different this year than what the kids experience in the spring. Um, what, this, what most students experience is in the spring is called an asynchronous model when they were at home. And that simply means that they might have had assignments and instruction pushed out to them, but most of their time uh, really could have been picking any time that they wanted to to work on those assignments. Um, this time around, our um, online instruction and our virtual days for hybrid will feature a synchronous model. And so um, if your students are uh, in person that day, obviously they have the teacher in front of them. Um, but if they're virtual that day, uh, the teachers will be um, having the first 15 minutes of their class live stream for the students at home to be on Google Meet. This will allow them to take attendance. This will allow them to um, do any kind of whole group instruction that needed to happen for there and it would allow them to give directions for students that are working at home. And then the rest of the class uh, might be uh, the students at home working on something in, uh, in Google Meet. So likely for most of our hybrid classes, the students wouldn't be um, expected to be on the live stream for the full 70 minutes, but they are expected to be on at the beginning of class. Um, and so uh, all of our online uh, classes and our hybrid classes um, are designed to work to run within the schedule. And so students should be available from eight until two o'clock, Monday through fr Friday, um, to have scheduled classes uh, whether they're at school or at home. District is uh, making sure that we have the staffing that's needed. And so we're, um, you know, making sure that our staff takes care of themselves, that our, that our staff uh, is following our, the same protocols that we have for students um, and that they're monitoring for social distancing, modeling mask wearing, um, use of hand sanitizer, uh, et cetera. All right, here are a few uh, frequently asked questions. Um, do parents have a choice on the method of instructional delivery for their students? And as I addressed earlier, the answer to that was yes. Um, right now we have either the hybrid model or the completely virtual model. Um, and then if things continue to open up, um, you know, and the um, things look like uh, we can do it, we'd love to have as many kids in person as possible. Will the district conduct COVID-19 testing? Uh, the answer to that question is no. Um, and per the Center of Disease Control, um, the district um, will not conduct COVID-19 testing. Um, and uh, the decision of whether a test needs to be conducted will be determined by either a healthcare provider or the local Department of Health. And so we'll, we'll always defer to them uh, in terms of any kind of COVID-19 testing. All right. And then the question, what if there is a positive test in my student's classroom or school? Um, and so we would work with the uh, Genesee County Department of Health um, to conduct contract tracing. Um, and so uh, physical distancing and face covering, coverings, that's why they're important. Um, and just to define close contact, close contact is defined as face-to-face -face contact without face coverings, without physical distancing for a time period greater than 15 minutes. And so we will work closely with the Genesee County Department of Health um, if we uh, have any noti notifications of a positive test. All right, what kind of face coverings may individuals wear? And so, um, they can wear any kind of cloth uh, face covering uh, as long as it covers the nose and the mouth. Um, you know, the surgical mask type coverings are fine. Again, as long as they cover the nose and mouth, it can be a disposable one or it can be one that you take back and forth and wash. Uh, they can bring their own, but do know that we uh, have um, uh, a number of disposable ones on hand at school. So if there were a student to show up at school and say, hey, I forgot my mask. Um, before they enter the building, they will be given uh, a mask and they will be expected to put that on. 
Uh, then the question, will individuals have to wear masks for the entire school day? So the concept that we're working with our students and um, that we, uh, frankly, working with our staff is the idea of if you're standing and moving, you have a mask on. Uh, so you're standing and moving when you're walking in the building, your mask is on as you enter the building. Uh, as you go to the bathroom and you're in the bathroom, your mask is on. Um, when students get into the classroom and they're seated, um, all the chairs are spaced six feet apart. Um, at that point, once they're in their chair and they're seated, if they choose to, they can take off their mask uh, during uh, that part of instruction. Um, and then the teacher may ask them to put their mask back on if they're doing any kind of group movement or something like that. But when they're in their seats at six feet apart, they can uh, remove their mask uh, for that instructional time. Also at lunchtime, they wear their mask as they get their food. Once they're seated at their spot, um, they can uh, take off their mask to eat. Um, and then of course, when they get up to throw away their food or lunch is over, they'll put their mask back on before standing up and go from there. All right, of course at high school, sports, clubs and activities are a big part of um, our student experience. Um, and so um, fall sports in the state have been delayed until uh, at least Monday, September 21st, 2020. Uh, I think I saw an update last night on the news that uh, the governor might be giving a little bit more direction on that um, either later this week or early next week. And so we're looking forward to seeing that direction. Um, so for right now, none of our fall sports have started, not only in Batavia, but in other districts as well. Uh, and we're also waiting on any kind of our clubs or um, our extracurricular music activities until late September, um, until we see that guidance. Um, I know our students would love to see those things start as soon as possible. And frankly, I, I would too. Um, but we wanna make sure for the first couple of weeks we get everybody in, make sure that uh, our environment and our routines are safe. And then we will start considering uh, when we open clubs and we'll be you know, watching for the guidance that comes along the way. All right, what you see in front of you now is uh, what the student schedule will look like. And this is whether you're in the online only version or in the hybrid version, um, the blocks will still be the same. And so our blocks are 74 minutes uh, each this year. Um, and our blocks will run um, two days a week for all, all of our blocks. And then on Fridays, it'll, it will alternate uh, which, which uh, day it is. But um, it'll be 74 minute blocks. Um, student arrival will be from 8 until 8.15. Um, breakfast will be from 7.30 to, until 8 o'clock. So no students will be admitted into the building before 7.30. 7.30 to 8 o'clock will be their only breakfast time. So this is a change for our students this year as we uh, last year were able to open it up during the middle of first block and such. We won't be able to do that this year. So any students eating breakfast will eat between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Any students not eating breakfast uh, will be expected to uh, arrive at the building. Um, at 8.15, instruction begins. So they should not be walking into the building at 8.15. Um, you no, know, so for your planning purposes for parents, that 8 to 805 window, um, you know, and probably can start dropping off around, you know, 755, you know, so that would be the window that you would want to do um, because um, we need to do temp checks as kids are coming in. They'll experience that at the door. Once they walk into the building, they'll head straight to their first block class. Um, so uh, students won't be uh, wandering the hallways or anything like that. They'll head straight to their class once they walk in the building and instruction will start right at 815. You can see the rest of the schedule. Um, block three, last year we ran three lunches uh, per day. This year it will be two lunches uh, per day. So lunch one, students that have lunch one will be between 1050 and 1120. Um, and then lunch two will run from 1210 to 1240. And you can see that there's a you know, 45 to 50 minute gap in there. And that's going to allow our staff to clean 
uh, the, the desks that are going to be in the uh, cafeterias in between. And then block four runs until two o'clock. So that's an earlier dismissal time than what those of you that have been at the high school have experienced in the past. Um, and this is a, a, allowing our buses to do a second run uh, at one of the elementary schools um, after they uh, do the run of our high school students. All right, we talked about sports. Oop. Okay, I talked a little bit about the online only model and the hybrid model. I just wanted to touch upon that earlier. So students that are in the online only model will have a schedule developed for them by their counselor. It will make sure depending on what grade level that they're in, that all of the core classes that they need at, at that grade level for graduation are plugged in there. Uh, like I said, there's one class, uh, you know, so ninth graders are typically in global nine. We have one section of global nine uh, based on that. So there won't be a, able to be a lot of movement in terms of what time that is. Um, online students will be expected to be in class um, at the time that their class is. That's when their teacher will be there teaching that. Um, the online classes uh, are going to be taught by our teachers. It's one of their teacher preps for the day. And so that's built into their schedule, um, depending on when the time is. Um, we do have a limited number of electives that uh, we can plug students into, um, but we aren't able to plug all of our uh, electives into the online only model, um, just due to staffing and many of our electives um, we only offer one section of them on a given year. And so we just don't have the ability to offer two sections of a, of a one section class. Um, so that will be the experience. One of the frequently asked questions that, I, that I've gotten in the last week or so is for online students who uh, were wanting to take an AP offering, um, what about them? And so, um, we're uh, going to be working with uh, uh, an online program, uh, probably by the name of Apex, but we're looking at a few different companies um, that if a student wants to take an AP offering, um, that um, this, this company has a, a course that they can take online that the district uh, will provide for them. Um, that would be asynchronous, um, but it would we would count it um as a credit for the student a high school credit they would get a grade in the class and they would be eligible to take the ap so um we're working through that um students who are in the hybrid model um uh, i gave the schedule a little bit earlier so i'm not going to go over that um extensively but our students in the hybrid model should know that on their days that they're virtual and not in person they still need to follow their schedule um, and make sure that they're logging on during that time. So they will be marked absent from their class if they're on a virtual day and they don't come into class. Um, you know, so that it won't be that somebody says, well, I wanted to come into class on Saturday afternoon instead of Monday at 8.15. Um, you know, our model just doesn't work that way um, because we want to make sure that um, students can interact with a live teacher and so that's a feature of both our hybrid model and our online only classes. All right, I included uh, these slides. This was in an email that hopefully most of you got sent home to you um, and some of the things I went over. Um, I did wanna talk about backpacks a little bit. Um, so in the past, our students have experienced um, that they would not be allowed to carry backpacks with them, that they had to go in their lockers. Um, we won't have students using lockers this year. Um, and that's for two reasons. Uh, one is, you know, if you can imagine being at lockers, the number of touches that happen on a lo locker over the course of the day, um, you know, would be a lot. Um, and the fact that if students are all at their lockers, that would um, make it very difficult for us to uh, follow the um, idea of trying to keep six feet uh, as much as possible. And so students will be carrying their backpacks with them uh, throughout the day. 
Um, and so they should bring the materials that they need for that day's classes in their backpack based on their schedule. Uh, I am, I have gotten some questions about uh, making sure that our staff isn't overloading the number of things that kids need to have in their backpack. And so we're going to do some work on consolidating binders and um, making sure that if the teacher is asking for a textbook to come in, that they're really going to use the textbook that day. Um, but um, a lot of our textbook resources can be uh, found on the Chromebook now. Um, but the Chromebook is something that for sure you're going to want to make sure is in their backpack, pens and pens and paper, and then we'll try to do as many things electronically as we can uh, to limit that. So backpacks, coats during the winter, all those things will travel with them and be part of their space. Our student restrooms uh, will have a maximum of two students in there at a time. And so that will be a change for students as we didn't necessarily limit the number. Um, we have staff on supervision that um, will be monitoring the number of students in the restroom. This is going to allow us to make sure that there's social distancing in the restroom also. Um, and then we'll uh, close some individual restrooms during the day to do cleaning uh, at the midday schedule. Our custodians will be um, uh, on a schedule there. And so we're just going to make sure that only one or two bathrooms are closed at a time so students have access to them. But we will be monitoring to make sure that there's a maximum of two students in a boys or girls uh, bathroom at a time. Okay, at this point, I'm going to have Mr. Corzelius come on. He's, he and uh, Ms. Rogers have been monitoring the chat room, and uh, I know that they've been uh, looking to answer your questions. Any questions in the chat room, uh, Mr. Corzelius or Ms. Rogers, that you wanted me to address? So, uh, Mr. Kessler, there's um, there's a couple questions that I haven't been able to completely answer yet. Um, I was about to type up a response to Rich Boyce's, and then if you want, we can pick up after that. Um, his question was about um, attending BOCES and if there's outbreaks in other districts. Um, so Rich, to answer your question with BOCES, our students are only going to be attending with a couple other districts. Not all districts will be attending at the same time. So on Mondays and Tuesdays when our students are there, um, they're controlling the other districts that, that we have access to. So there's there's districts meeting Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, and then the other half of theirs will be meeting, I believe, on, on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, so we will only be there at the same time as, I believe, the Alexander District and Caledonia Mumford at this time. Um, so Patricia Kingston, are the uh, same classes always on the same day as example? Will they have math on Monday, Wednesday, or will it change per week? Do you want to answer that, or would you like me to? Uh, I, I can answer it. So actually, um, if your student, let's say, has Algebra 1 first block on um, what traditionally have been AC days, um, they'll have Algebra 1 first block two days in a row. So they'll have it Monday and Tuesday. And that allows uh, the student to one day be in person for the class, and then the other day be virtual. And then on the other first block days on Wednesday and Thursday, you know, the student might have global nine and would have that two consecutive days. Fridays would be the day that would rotate, um, you know, so that we can keep an equal number uh, of classes that way. Okay. Um, will the same technology platform be used district wide, such as Google Classroom? Yeah, for grades 2 through 12, uh, Google Classroom uh, is going to be our main platform. Um, the primary school is looking at a program called Seesaw um, that looks like it might be a little bit more appropriate for younger students, but uh, Google Classroom is going to be the platform um, that all of our teachers will be expected to use. All right. Um, is there anything specific that's needed on the, on the Chromebook? Or can students use their personal PCs, larger displays, or easier to work on? Um, I should have added while attending class at home. Um, that's a good question. I do know that our that um, Google is our main platform, and Google interacts really well with Chromebooks. And so, you know, to kind of give you a non-answer, like 
with some uh, some brands of computer and such, Google doesn't work at the same level as it does with the Chromebook. And you know, frankly, some things work better not on a Chromebook. Um, but uh, our teachers are planning with the Chromebook in mind. So students are welcome to use their you know home computer and home device. Um, but every student will have a Chromebook because that way we can guarantee that, um, you know, the videos that we're pushing out and the medium that we're using is geared toward Chromebooks. But students are welcome to use their own device if it, if it works for them. Um, okay. If a child is scheduled for in-person but isn't feeling well, uh, can, they, can they virtual learn that day instead? Yes. And so we're going to encourage that. So, you know, if a uh, child's running a fever in the morning and you know, or, you know, their, their stomach just isn't quite feeling set, right? Maybe in the past as, as a parent, like, you know, I mean, I probably said it to my son, like, oh, you'll probably be fine, you know, get it, get on into school. You know, in the, in the world of COVID, we don't want to do that. But like, um, if the student is well enough that day um, to, uh, to log in, um, the answer to that is yes, we want them to come in online. Um, you know, we would we wouldn't have that plan as like an extended option, you know, where the student is then choosing after a week, like saying, "Hey, um, I'm in the hybrid model, but you know, I, I'm not feeling like going in in person." Um, you know, but on a given day, if a student's not feeling well that day, um, we'd rather have them stay home, make sure that they're well before they arrive in person, and that they they log in virtually for that day. Um, Shelly Dale Hall, just to answer your question quickly, the answer is yes, there will just be less, you know, feel free to reach out to me and I can help you with those schedules. Um, there's, um, okay, so kind of for Christine Quinn Schrader's question and Pastor Dan Schmidt asked earlier, um, is there any reevaluation or checkpoints uh, where the data will be reviewed for COVID cases and any plan to add more days as the year progresses? Is there a plan with hopes to be full-time in-person classes at all? So the answer to that is yes. Um, and so a lot of our direction um, we get from New York State and um, from the health department. So right now, uh, there's two big factors that's keeping us from having students in every day. Um, it's the six feet uh, requirement without masks. Um, and so essentially in most of our high school classes, classrooms, we can get between 12 and 15 physical deaths, um, and that's spacing them at six feet. Um, and then, and then, um, you know, and then staffing issues. But our hybrid and our online uh, classes, you know, they're such because they're in the student's schedule that if, like, we were able to say, hey, we can return students, um, you know, every day, they would still be in the same schedule. Um, you know, so it, so the schedule is designed that if we are able to go back all in person, um, that the schedule can accommodate that and the student can stay in the same schedule. Okay, so the next two questions I'm going to read together for you, Mr. Kessler, because they're related. Um, sure. It has to do with students staying home from school. Um, so for JK students, if you stay home from school for any reason, you will need a doctor no excuse to return to school. Is that the case for the high school? And then also, uh, if my child stays home from not feeling well just for that day, can they go back to school the next in school day or do they need to have a doctor's note and a COVID test done? Um, they don't have to have a COVID test done unless directed by uh, either the health department or their doctor. Um, a student that is sick on a given day, we would need to come back with a doctor's note. Um, but the doctor's note might be, you know, um, evaluated the student. Like, so I would say in most cases, the doctor is not going to be recommending a, a COVID case uh, or excuse me, a COVID test. Um, but we do need confirmation uh, from, from the doctor on that um, or the health department. Um, and I, I know it's a change for people, um, you know, but it, it's, it's just, you know, in terms of the building being able to monitor um, when students were out sick, we, we would need a doctor's note on the return. So, uh, Rich, that answers your question as well, as far as needing a doctor's note. It'll be up to the doctor as to whether or not we need the COVID test. Um, 
Rich is clarifying. Are you saying a doctor's note for any absence? Uh, kids stay home for a variety of reasons. Yeah, I would say if, if, if you had a question and you thought it was a reason related not to, um, not to illness, um, that you contact the, um, the nurse or the counselor or AP. Um, and so we would um, be able to evaluate that. So like, you know, if somebody was absent for a college visit or something like that, you know, that might be a different situation. But um, you know, allow our staff to help you evaluate that. All right. Um, if a student isn't feeling well and stays home for virtual learning, do we just contact the office or will they be counted uh, during attendance? Uh, they will be counted during attendance, but, you know, like any day last last year, you know, if your student was going to be uh, absent for the day and it was supposed to be their in-person day, please call the office, um, you know, so that we can account for that. Um, so that's really the end of the questions. Um, I'm sorry, folks, that I that I typed to. I'm not the fastest typer on the planet. Um, and if I if I didn't get to or fully answer any of your questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me or the counseling center. There were some um, scheduling specific questions that were out there, and I tried my best to answer those. Um, so you know, please feel free to reach out to us for any individual concerns when it comes to certain. Uh, BOCES scheduling questions, things along those lines, Mr. Rogers. Um, I, the, they are, the BOCES will be reaching out as well um, to, to give further explanation as to where, what programs are meeting. Um, and, and again, I'm, I'm happy to help any way I can with more individual and specific questions. Um, for those of you who didn't see, who are parents of freshmen, one of the questions I did answer, was able to get clarification during our meeting on September 10th, um, for the freshmen, um, A through K will be meeting, last names A through K will be meeting from 8 to 11, and L through Z will then meet um, at 12.30 to 3.30 that day. Um, and that is our plan is to hand out Chromebooks to freshmen at that time. And one of the parents did ask if um, they could get their Chromebooks at other times if their students were not able to attend. Yes. Um, so please reach out to my office at extension 2001. We'd be happy to help um, with individual circumstances of that nature. Um, and again, if, if I missed any of your other questions, feel free to either retype it or uh, let myself or Mr. Kessler know. Yeah, and let me just reiterate, if you, uh, you know, have questions specific to, specific to your student, um, our, your counselor is happy to help. You know, so it, it's a different year, right, to start for all of us. And, uh, you know, I know most of you that are, are in here today and, you know, I hope that you know that we'll be uh, responsive. Um, you know, um, we wish we could provide everything just as we did last year, um, as probably many of you do, um, but we've had to make some adjustments, but we wanted to make the uh, students' experience as, as meaningful as possible. And so what I have here, um, I'm ending our portion of the meeting um, you're welcome to stay in. We have about an 11 minute video where um, our co-mayors for this year, Jake Long and Cam Kuzlik, uh, they interview me. Um, and so they had uh, they asked some of the same questions that we went over today, but they asked a couple questions about the student experience. And so I'm going to try to pull that up uh, and share that with you. Um, again, thank you for coming in today um, and and uh, we'll end with this video. Hi, I'm Jacob Long. Hi, I'm Cam Kuzlik, and we're here with Mrs. Teller, Mrs. Robinson, and Mr. Kessler to ask them a few things about uh, this upcoming school year. So, Mr. Kessler, um, a lot of people are asking, what does the hybrid plan mean? Can you fill us in on that? Sure. So the hybrid plan means it's somewhere between in-person and online learning. So, um, of course, my hope is always to have all the students back in the building, but uh, the way that we need to start in terms of social distancing, in terms of six feet between desks in the classroom, is having about half of the students at a time. And so that what that will mean for the students is that um, half of their days they'll be uh, in school in person, and then the other half of the days they'll be learning virtually. 
and um, all the teachers will be live streaming part of their classes. And so uh, what students can expect is that all or part of their class each time will be live streamed. Um, so they can go and actually they're required to go into their class, whether they're here in person or at home at the time of their class. So obviously with all the new safety restrictions, there has to be some things that change. So what are students gonna do about lockers? Are we gonna have to carry everything around in backpacks or are we still gonna be able to use lockers? What is the new, uh, the new system? Sure, so that's a big change for us is that we haven't allowed students to carry backpacks uh, in previous years. And this year, actually, we're moving away from using lockers and students will carry backpacks with them. And so they should plan on having their Chromebook in their backpack every day when they're here and the materials that they need for the classes that they have that day. The reason that we're not using lockers uh, is just for uh, sanitary reasons in terms of lockers would be a number of touches on there. And also to make sure that we don't have uh, too many groupings of students all there at one time. And so uh, students will be carrying backpacks uh, to each of their classes this year and not using lockers. Uh, to piggyback, not wanting to congest things in the hallways and such, uh, how are student restrooms uh, going to operate? Sure. So we have to limit the number of students in student restrooms. And so we'll have uh, two students at a time in each of the boys and girls restrooms. And so once a student comes out, another student can go in. But that allows us to create space between the restrooms and then uh, we'll have sanitizing stations uh, right outside the restrooms as people go in. And then, of course, our, our sinks for washing hands. So there'll be uh, a limit of two students uh, in a restroom at a time this year. So I know extracurriculars are important to a lot of students. So how are clubs and sports going to work this year? Yeah, so we're still anticipating a, a few things. So. Um, New York State has decided that uh, sports uh, cannot start until uh, September 21st at the earliest. And so we're still all awaiting guidance for that. Um, obviously, a lot of students and uh, me as the principal are really hoping that there is a way that we can uh, start our sports uh, on the 21st. So we're awaiting guidance for that. I think a lot is going to depend on what the COVID numbers look like at that time and what the district plans are. And likewise with like our extracurricular clubs and um, also like some of our smaller music ensembles, we're using late September, early October, the same time frame as sports on deciding which things we can start then. Um, but we do really wanna make sure um, that once we get everybody in safely and we see what school's gonna look like, that we start to open up our clubs and sports for students as much as we can. Um, another big concern and talk is about how students are going to be able to stay safe. Um, and one of the things is wearing masks. Uh, so can you fill us in on how masks are going to work in the school year this year? Sure. So I, I like to have people think about it like you're going into a store, um, you're going to a school. So like if you, I went into Walmart the other day, when I walked in, I needed to have my mask on. I wore my mask the whole time I was in Walmart. And then when I walked out and got in my car, I took my mask off. And so students should plan that um, when they're walking around and they're up and about, they have to wear their mask. It is a requirement um, to be in school with that. Once students are in class, because the desks are stationed six feet apart from each other, they, they can take their mask off at that point um, and then you know, if they have to get up and use the bathroom or something, their mask needs to come back on. Or if they're working in a small group and can't stay at six feet at that point, their mask would come back on. But anytime they're in the hallways or up and about or in the bathrooms, the mask would be on. So obviously operating under the hybrid model is going to mean that students are in school on different days. So how is that going to affect students' class schedules? Yeah, so that's a good question. So um it won't affect their class schedules in terms of um uh how many times they meet because um if you're let's say in first block you have chemistry first block traditionally ac days 
Um, one of the days you would be in person in chemistry class, and then the other day you would be virtual. Um, and that's how it would be for all of your classes. And then on Fridays for the entire district is going to be all virtual. And so you'll get a schedule for Friday on shortened classes um, that the entire class would come in virtually at the same time. And then you've talked a, a little bit about how virtual days are going to work from an in-school perspective. Can you uh, tell us how virtual days are going to work uh, from a student at home? Yeah, so if you're a student at home, uh, you should have your Chromebook at home. Um, you're expected to log in at the time that your classroom starts. Uh, your teacher will be taking attendance uh, at the beginning of class. Uh, we'll be live streaming at least the first part of the class, giving directions to both the students that are with them and the students at home. Some of the teachers may keep their uh, students that are learning virtual in for the entire session. And some of them might have their virtual students after 15 minutes uh, complete an assignment in Google Classroom and then do vice versa the other day when the other kids are uh, in person. Well, I know this is a burning question that everybody has, but with the new safety restrictions, how is lunch going to work? Yeah, so that's a good question. So we still are under the six feet uh, restriction in terms of lunch. Um, and so we actually just took out the tables and we put uh, desks in there uh, facing each other. So we have desk pods of four um, at six feet. So essentially you could have a group of four that eats together. It keeps you at six feet but it allows you to still socialize during lunch. And so we're gonna use both our large cafeteria, our small cafeteria, um, and probably our auxiliary gym if we need more space as locations for students to be able to do lunch. And then uh, Ms. Robinson and Mrs. Teller, a lot of people are worried about uh, what school activities are still gonna happen uh, during the school year. Can you tell us what any plans are going forward? Um, I guess I'll start. So uh, we've already met with our student government, including Jake and Cam, um, a couple of weeks ago and just started brainstorming some ideas. Um, I know that many students have reached out to Jake and Cam on their Instagram page. So if you um, are friends with them on there or if you'd like to follow them, I'll have them give you their their name. Um, and, and we're trying to brainstorm different ideas to make it work best for everybody. Uh, we definitely don't want to see activities not happen, but we do have to keep those safety measures in mind. Uh, we are meeting with student government again. I believe it's next week. Uh, Mrs. Teller, do you want to jump in on any of that? Yeah, so we want to do as many things as we can, um, socially distanced, of course, but we want everybody's experience to be a good experience. So um, any ideas that you do have, we do have some ideas that have been um, sent out by some of our student government students. Like maybe we would do like a socially distanced movie night. We're still hoping to do some homecoming um, activities, but anything that you have, I'm gonna reiterate again, send to your co-mayors so they can like send it on their Instagram so they can talk to us too. Yeah, and if you don't know, like Cam and Jake, talk to your class officers too. I mean, they can get the messages through. And I think the most important thing is just going to be that we all communicate and try and come up with, with what's going to be best for everybody. All right, um, Cam, do you have any more questions? Um, uh, no. How about you? No. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, and I hope that a lot of people who are watching this, uh, your questions have been answered. Thank and, you. Uh, if thank you're you. interested in following us on Instagram, it's Jake underscore and underscore Cam for Comares. All right, Jake, maybe repeat that one more time. Yeah. I think you broke up a little bit. So um, go ahead. Jake underscore and underscore cam for the number four uh, co mayors All right. Thanks, guys, for uh, talking with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right, well, I think we got to most of the questions in the feed. Uh, Mr. Corzillas and Ms. Rogers, can you hear me right now? Yes, yes okay. we can. 
Um, so there's just a couple last questions that we'll finish up right before we log off. Um, uh, Mr. Boyce asked if teacher if uh, if the teachers take their class outside, can the students remove their masks? Um, it depends on the situation. Um, if it's a group activity, they should leave their masks on. Um, if they're seated at six feet, uh, they can take their masks off. Um, and then um, my senior is asking about fun activities like homecoming, senior parking spaces. Um, yeah, we are thinking about all those things. So um, Mr. Corzelius and the class advisors are working on um, scheduling a time to do the senior parking spaces. And homecoming is going to look a little bit different. We're working through some ideas, but um, we're still going to look to see if uh, we might have to push it back a little bit, but that um, maybe we could create the murals. The co-mayors have talked to me about some ideas on some virtual competitions that they might do between classes. Um, so we're not canceling homecoming. It's just going to, going to look different. And we're um, really allowing our student government um, to help provide us with the ideas. And so um, if you have seniors, but frankly, ninth through 12th, uh, encourage them um, to find somebody from student government um, because I'm frankly meeting with them frequently, um, you know, and they're concerned about the same things that your kids are concerned about, um, you know, and we want to try to make the experience uh, as great as we can. All right. Well, again, thank you so much, everybody, for taking the time this morning to come in. Um, we'll be available via email to answer any individual questions that you have. Like I said, reach out to your counselors um, if you need anything. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you, everyone.